Hi guys, it's been a while. Finally, Zen has launched and the results are, while mostly good, have somewhat been tainted by slightly below par gaming results. There's a lot of good speculation going on and I want to help add some clarity to this topic so this video will try to explain how the Zen architecture produces the strange results we've seen. Firstly, Zen cores are organized in a compute complex of four cores with their own L2 cache and a shared L3 victim cache. Zen uses its L3 as a pool of backup cache for when the L2 spills over, moving the least used data to the L3. Upon subsequent L2 cache refilling, if the L3 already contains the data, it can quickly be accessed, leading to a performance gain. There is a good reason for this approach, as all four cores within the CCX are fully coherent with the entirety of the L3. It's not 2 megabytes L3 per core, it's 8 megabytes L3 for all cores, an important distinction. To compensate for not having a traditional L3 cache, Zen has a bigger L2 with a fast transfer rate between the L2 and the shared L3. On a basic level, the Zen CCX design is all about multi-core throughput, as the entire cache data for each core assists the other core's performance. Think of the cores processing a workload. Core 1 generates cache data, it fills up the L2 and some of it spills into the L3. Core 2 now gets some work, it sees that the data it needs is already in the L3 so it starts without a stall to fetch from system RAM. As a result, while the L2 is private, some of the data within it eventually gets shared to all cores. Sounds good right? But then we come to this, the Ryzen chip, with two separate Zen compute complexes of four cores each. Right away, it should be obvious. You should think to yourself, hold on, how the heck will the cores 5, 6, 7 and 8 share its L2 and L3 with the first four cores? It can't, well certainly not at a high speed. Before we talk about the potential performance problems of this design, we have to understand why renowned engineers like Jim Keller and Mike Clark went with it. They could design one monolith compute complex of 8 cores with double the L3 cache. Doing so, however, would require a much more complex interconnect to transfer data between the L2, L3 and Zen cores. It's an exponential problem. The more cache to core associations you need, the more complex and power hungry the transfer subsystem will be. If you understood so far, the following will be clear. With Ryzen, threads must never be moved from a compute complex to the other until that workload is finished. Because the L2 especially cannot be transferred to the L3 and then to the new core in the separate compute complex, it results in a total cache miss. Likewise, L3 victim cache data that's relevant for workload in one CCX may be absent in the other, and so the effectiveness of the L3 drops. Note that this problem does not just apply to games, it applies to all software that is not thread scheduled properly. It is predominantly a gaming issue because most games are low threads and relates to how Windows manages these as well as all the other background system threads. Unless specified, Windows can and will move threads around to different cores. I don't have Ryzen for testing yet, but I did find some very useful data from other reviewers. Let's have a look at thread usage in Battlefield 1 as an example. Note that the point of this is not to compare performance with the Intel i7, but to highlight Zen's CCX flaws when it's mishandled. Battlefield 1 can scale across many threads, but it seems to tap out at 10. When Windows schedules these workload over 10 threads, performance is good. Again here. But when a few threads migrate between the compute complexes, as seen here, when thread 1 is dispersed to threads 11 onwards, performance drops. Again here. The performance hit is not massive, but a cache miss does incur a latency penalty. Over time, the effect adds up and results in lower performance than what the CPU is actually capable of. Importantly, if you come here to watch this video, you want to know whether this problem can be fixed. Yes, mostly it can. I will go into the mostly part later. Windows actually already has an optimized scheduler for Zen's design. It's just not active. This particular mode of scheduling stems from many years back when Intel designed architectures which Windows did not know how to handle properly. Ryzen should be considered as a NUMA processor, or non-uniform memory access, as compared to regular SMP or symmetric multiprocessor. NUMA systems have multiple nodes of CPUs, which the OS needs to treat accordingly with scheduling by keeping threads within a node so they have the full speed cache and memory access. In effect, Windows needs to treat Ryzen 7 as two separate CPUs, like a dual socket system. Threads will not migrate across separate CPUs and performance will not degrade. As an example, you could game quite well on a dual Intel Xeon Windows PC. Pay close attention to the thread usage. This is a dual 8-core 16-thread system in Battlefield 1. 
Note how the major threads are constrained within the first four or five cores of each CPU. Thread migration occurs within the first 16 threads, so there's no CPU to CPU jumping. Again, we see the same scheduling in Witcher 3. This is Windows handling numerous CPUs properly, and unfortunately at the current time it is not enabled for Ryzen. As a software guy myself, I see this as a problem that can be fixed by the OS with an update. However, let's get back to the mostly I mentioned earlier. Once the Windows scheduler becomes Ryzen aware, there will still be some games or apps which are coded in a way that will run worse on numerous systems. Let's say that your code is reliant on sharing thread data, that is, thread coherency where one thread may need the data from another thread. If it is not coded to be NUMA aware, the dependencies of threads between the different compute complexes can introduce latency. This is something AMD have to work closely with software developers to resolve some current games and future titles. So you have to ask, why did AMD design Zen like this? It's a compromised design. Like all good hardware, Zen's main goal is to be smaller, therefore easier or cheaper to produce, as well as offering exceptional performance per watt. But ultimately, Zen is not designed for gaming or even regular PC users. It is a server or HPC design first and foremost. It is within these markets where core size and power usage are critical, and software are quite used to dealing with multiple separate CPUs, even thousands of individual CPUs. Despite this, Ryzen 7 is still very capable of gaming, and it's excellent at most of the professional workloads. With some software updates and optimizations, it will prove to be a very powerful CPU architecture in the many years to come. If you are a pure gamer, most of these problems should be resolved with upcoming Ryzen quad cores with only one compute complex. Even if Windows scheduling is not updated, with just one compute complex, there's no issue of threat mismanagement. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. It's been a fun week with so much interest in hardware and how things work. Let's just say, if anything, Ryzen has really brought back the enthusiasm for PC hardware. For the first time ever, even a gamer can consider an 8-core 16-thread like the Ryzen 1700 and it is finally affordable. For this, AMD should be commended. Thanks a lot for watching guys. Should I do a video on the upcoming Vega? Let me know in the comments.